Hello, I'm Dan, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, we are starting on a in-progress project here. Um, let me spin this around here and show you. I have been working on this box. It is not the greatest quality wood. You can kind of see some, um, like, worm stuff. But uh, it's cherry, and this box is going to be the housing for... Um, my homemade stir plate. So, what we're going to do here, I've got some space carved out for the controls and things. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to start with the top. I need to sand this down, try and get this a little bit smooth so that it sits a little bit more flush. Then what's going to happen is um, we're going to screw the top we're going to drill some holes and screw the top down and then sand this whole thing to get rid of all of these little edges and then after we do that the top will get unscrewed and we need to cut out a square out of the middle of this thing so let's get to it Okay, these will get countersinked eventually, but um, after not till after we cut this out, because I'm going to be gluing a sheet of plastic on top, and I want to countersink it through the plastic. So um, we're just going to screw these in by hand. Okay, we're uh, we're pretty smooth. The process of uh, getting this flat has kind of messed up this corner just a little bit. Um, I am going to fill in these little gaps on the bottom with some glue and some sawdust, but I I, I got to wait to do that. Um, I need to sand the bottom, and um, I'm going to get the the sawdust to rub in there from the process of sanding the bottom with the disc sander. Um, plus I want to go over, I'm going to want to go over the whole thing with the discs, with the disc sander anyways, to get, um, this is a pretty rough grit. I want to get, go through the, the, the grit spectrum, so to speak. Um, but I don't, oh, I guess I should leave the top on um, even though we're not going to sand the top, we're going to leave the top rough because we're going to want to do the edges. Um, 
But I'll have to take the top off before we glue so I can work on the top while we're gluing. Okay, we've been sanded. Now let's take the top off. The one thing I am going to do, since this is on the inside, I'm just going to mark right there and right there so that I know so that I can line this back up with the correct holes. So just a little bit of marker mark with a marker. Um, we'll set the top aside. The goal here is to get this in the crack but not on anything else. We are obviously going to have to sand this again. That should do it. We'll have to sand this again, obviously. But we'll just set that to the side. It won't take very long to dry, and we'll start working on the next piece. Okay, I've got a drill press here with a fairly small Forstner bit on it. Um, and we're going to drill holes in the corners, I think. I just want to make sure that we're in the right spot before I actually do this. There we go, that should be good. I don't think we need to do the other corners because we can start here and cut this way and then this way and from the other side kind of the same thing. We had a little bit of tear out on this, this side but again it doesn't really matter because we're going to cut this out and then plastic is getting glued glued down. So let's uh, get set up to cut this out. Okay, this is going to get a little tricky. That is what I was afraid of. Okay, we're gonna have to glue that back together. Okay, this is fairly unfortunate. I was worried about this because I knew it was weak down the middle, but I um, was really hoping it was gonna be all right. I probably should have cut that last little bit by hand, but I think it'll be fine. We're gonna use some Gorilla Glue. Um, we're going to press it back together. 
just like this, and then I'm going to put some tape on it, and then we're going to wait and hope. We could do this with wood glue. Wood glue is pretty strong, but the Gorilla Glue dries faster. I was going to tape this so that it doesn't move, but I think that might just end up gluing the tape to the whole thing. So instead, I'm going to very lightly clamp it. Okay, we got to sand this a little bit, not a lot, because we don't have the top on and we don't want to make this too thin. Um, we will probably sand it again after we put the top on, but I want to clean this up a little bit here first before we do that. Okay, we're going to go over the whole thing with the other one again after we're done. Um, so that's good. I did run into a problem here, though. So uh, we've got this toggle switch here, which is going to go in here, kind of. It's a bit of a... Bit of a tight fit, but it's going to go in there. It's, this is all going to be very tight. Um, the problem I've run into is that I don't quite have enough room to get this in, um, which is a rheostat. This will hook up to the power. And then this will hook up to this guy, and then the fan. This this fits. This doesn't quite fit, which is a little bit of a problem. Because I I could have sworn I tested this and it and it fit, but it may have fit the other way and. Uh, there isn't really room to put it in the other way. So I need to figure out how I'm going to get in here, if you can see, and cut some of this out. Um, let me do some brainstorming and we'll figure that out. There we go. We got it. Um, I just used a... I don't even know what this bit is called. It's just for a Dremel. Um, look like a kind of like a carving bit maybe or an engraving bit. Something like that. I've never actually used that bit before. Um, and that Dremel's old and, and it's been living out here so it's kind of rusty and had to use pliers to get the thing out, to get the, um, to get the bit, the old other bit that was in there out. Okay, so this fits in. This, let's, let's dry fit this here. Okay, well, I guess we're not completely dry fitting it because I have lost the, I have lost the nut for, um, the toggle switch here. Okay, so there is enough room. Barely. Barely, though. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do... Okay, we've got this guy.
clamps a little glued on, but it's all right. Honestly, like, this is gonna stay on 99.99% .99 of the time. But I wanted it to be able to come off in case the wiring is wrong or something. Okay, we mostly got it. Okay, so the next step is probably to glue the plastic on the top. Okay, I've got this big old sheet of plastic. I think the best way to do this is to glue the plastic, cut the plastic larger, glue the lid to the plastic, and then come back and cut it flat, and then when we sand it, it'll sand flush. So we'll start by cutting the plastic here so that it's just a little hair bigger. Well, not a hair bigger, but bigger. Yeah, I, th I think we're probably all right. So I'm gonna let, this is gonna take a little while to dry. We're gonna let this dry. Um, when it's done, we will drill holes through for the screws through the plastic. Um, and then we'll have to come th through from the other side to countersink it. Um, oh, you know what? In the meantime, while this is drying, we've got some other stuff we can work on. Okay, so, I've got our little blocks of wood. These are going to get some uh, glue. They're going to get glued onto here. Um, I am out of clamps.
Okay, we've got Danish oil, we've got a box. This is just plain natural Danish oil, nothing particularly special about it. Okay, second coat time. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see here. The light's not great, but um, I have three coats of the Spray-On Poly on here. It's still a little tacky, but it has been, I don't know, 18 hours, maybe? Um, I'm a little scared to set it directly onto this because I don't really want it to get dirty. So I think what's going to happen here is I'm going to put some tape down to set it on. Okay, so that's all good. Um, we have our fan, which I glued the big magnet onto. So that could kind of cure overnight. Um, I should test this out. Let's um, let's hook this up and test this out. Okay, so I don't know where my wire strippers are. Um, this is just a, a power cord for, I think it's cut off of an old rechargeable Logitech mouse. So in theory, okay. It's a little vibrating, but uh, it's not well balanced. So that works. I'm gonna screw this onto like itself, but I think I'm not gonna do that. And, um, and um, we're not gonna use the Gorilla Glue here. We're gonna use the wood glue because this Gorilla Glue expands and I don't wanna deal with that. Um, oh, uh, there's another thing that we need to do here yet, too, which I forgot about. So this is the back, this side is the back. Um, I do need, I need to put a hole in for the power cord to go through, because I did not do that. Okay, so the power cord's gotta go through there. We've gotta install basically all of the electronics before we get too terribly far here. Okay, I'm a, I'm a dumb man. I could not find electrical tape in the garage here anywhere. There was probably some here somewhere. So I went to the store. I did get the nut for this guy. So we can actually affix that now. But I bought what I thought was electrical tape. This is not electrical tape, this is cloth friction tape. I don't even know what this is used for. So we're going to use duct tape because I'm not going back to the store. Okay, so um, since we have our nut now, 
we're going to go ahead and actually affix this guy in place. And now I lost the little thing that labels it on off, but that is fairly unnecessary. Okay. That is in. Now we're going to take these two. We're going to twist them together. Duct tape fixes everything, right? So that goes to there. This is where things get a little bit trickier. Because we have this rheostat, which goes in there. And it doesn't have quite... Um, Quite the same kind of connectors. This really isn't as much about holding the wires on as it is about um, keeping them from like touching things they're not supposed to. You really can't see what I'm doing here. My hand is in the way. But it's alright. Uh, this is just, we're just, we're gonna hook this up. Just to make sure that it works. If I remember correctly, off is up. Off is down. <laughs> okay, so. We are on. Okay, we're working, excellent. Now, um, we're gonna put a little bit of duct tape on this one. little bit on this one like so and then this guy goes through that hole Tighten that down. Just finger tight. Okay, this is where things really get kind of difficult. Because we have all of these wires now.
that are kind of in the way. We don't want them to get up in the fan. And obviously this whole thing needs, glue, maybe not glued down, but I was going to glue it down. I've got some super glue here, but it's going to be really hard to get this glued in place. Um, goes this way. So it goes there. Let's um hang on one second. It obviously rattles around. Um, okay, the super glue isn't working. Um, we're going to use the regular Gorilla Glue. Um, should be all right. I'm just going to put it in the bottom where I can see that the super glue was. And uh, we'll take and set this whole thing back down in. Where it's supposed to go. This is obviously only roughly where it's supposed to go. I'm going to take these guys, little spacers, set them on top. And then we're going to wedge this whole thing down in. The spacers are there so that um, the expanding Gorilla Glue does what it's supposed to do. Did I have this lid on backwards before? Boy, it sure feels like it. Okay, I'm just going to screw it down. Um, okay, there we go. Um, when we come back to the video, this should be dry and we can test it out. Okay, got the screws out, let's take a look. Take the spacers out. We're spinning freely. We seem to be glued down pretty tightly. Let's um, put this back on. And before we screw this down, let's uh, plug it in. Hold it down. We are spinning. It's loud because it's not balanced very well. Okay. Now, before we screw it back in, I have our beaker and the stir bar.
This is... I was afraid of this. The problem, actually, believe it or not, so how these things work is that one end is one pole and the other end is the other. Um, and then the problem with this magnet is actually that this side is one pole the whole way across, but this side is the other pole. So it's pulled on the flat sides, not left to right. Um, which is why this isn't working. Um, so we're gonna have to do something else. Um, I have an idea and I will, uh, will, let me go get, I have some other magnets, let me go get those. Okay, so I have some very small little round neodymium magnets here that I bought for a different project. So these are pulled on opposite sides. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue them down on opposite sides in the middle here. They should be as strong as this bar, they're just not as big. Um, so this, this should work, hopefully. Oh, they just like slam together. I forgot to put the cat back on this Gorilla Glue last night. Um, and we're gonna use the, I have super glue, we're gonna use the super glue for this because it'll dry much, much quicker than the Gorilla regular Gorilla Glue dries. We mostly just need to make sure that we place these down in the opposite manner. So let's just, um, there's a lot of crud on here. I'm gonna use my knife and try to scrape some of that off. Just a little bit, just to kind of roughen it up. Um, and this, this is just a ring off of, um, out of one of these hard drives that I harvested the original magnets out of. Um, and I think it's aluminum, because it doesn't seem to be magnetic. So, um, let's see here. That... Is not staying where I want it to stay. Just try and get it to stay right there, and hope that uh, you can't. Well, you can't see anything because my hand. Okay, let's just let that dry for a second. Then we'll glue the other one across from it with the opposite pole facing up. Um, that's going to be a little bit hard to tell. Um, we will use the stir bar to figure it out. We may have to glue some more magnets down if this if these aren't quite strong enough. Okay, so we want to put this down this way with this side up. Um, right about there. You got to be real careful here because we don't want them to come together. You can't really see what I'm doing. I'm holding a piece of wood between them and uh, I'm using another piece of wood to kind of hold it down. While the glue dries, 
It shouldn't take very long for the glue to dry. It super glue dries pretty quickly. I mean, it's already dried on my fingers. Um, in fact, this is probably almost dry already. Our, let's turn the speed down the whole way. Okay. Let's go ahead and um, set the lid back on. Okay, yeah, that was going to happen. Okay, set this guy up here. Hmm. Are they just not strong enough? They may not be strong enough. Hmm. Something seems to be wrong here. Okay, I figured out what's wrong. These somehow got glued on in the same direction. That's really unfortunate because I am going to have a really hard time getting them back off now. Okay, the glue is mostly dry here. Let me just... Um... Okay, we're good there. Magnets are oriented in the correct direction. Hopefully. That's what it's supposed to do. We're spinning at low speed. I don't know if you can actually hang on me. You can kind of see it. You can kind of see the funnel starting to form in the top. Okay, we can't turn it up the whole way. Part of the problem is um, the shape of the bottom of this flask. Is, uh... Convex? Convex? Yeah, convex. So, um, the magnet likes to get thrown. I can probably even get a bigger stir bar and that might be better. I think that's about as fast as it can go. You can kind of see the light's kind of in the wrong place for this to be super visible. Oh, don't move it around, Dan. All right. Well, now we just got to put the top back on. Two magnets was enough. I just had to get them oriented in the correct direction. Too bad it took me so long to figure that out. Right, so, put the screws back on and then we're done. I really should try and find a knob for this at some point. 
but um, I've never really been that high on my priority list because it was never in a good case before, but uh, now it is, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, Okay, there we go. This is the front. It's not the greatest polyurethane job in the world, but uh, I'm not particularly good with polyurethane. So there we go. Um, if you like the video, click like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time for some more stuff.